at uh, Mill Branch Creek Restoration in Knox County, Kentucky. Uh, we've done this restoration for a number of reasons, the most important of which is a threatened minnow that's here in the stream, it's the black side dace. This is the black side dace. It's native to eight counties in Kentucky and three in Tennessee. It's endemic to headwater streams. And these are just starting to get a little breeding color. You see the distinctive black stripe and some speckling and a black line, and they'll get rosy lips as they uh, as they get progressed further on into the spring. And these are these are adult fish, very unique, excellent indicator of good water quality. We've done this restoration with that minnow specifically in mind, as well as some some other issues related to stream stability. This stream. Formerly before the restoration uh, was pushed up against the hillside by farming and, and, and historic land use to make the most use out of this, this bottom land here for farming and pasture. When we first started this project, the banks are just vertical straight up and down. The banks are failing and this is endemic of, pro of streams all over Kentucky. It's also a major uh, contribution to, of sediment into the streams, which it kills mussels. It, it, it affects the fishery, not just from an endangered species, but from a, a smallmouth and a, just a, from a, a game species. It, it affects water quality. Sedimentation is the biggest pollutant we have in the world. It, it, uh, all, all this sediment dumping in here, plus the landowners losing land. Since this project started, he's lost about a foot and a half, two feet of his stream bank into the, into the stream, which is an initial thing. Now, this is the reason we started working on it. this restoration we've come in and we've we've put some meanders back into the stream thereby increasing the heterogeneity of the habitat so we've got some nice pools some deeper pools and some some riffles with some smaller habitat within the riffles and uh, one thing we've done on this creek is we've used a lot of a lot of wood to improve habitat and also to improve stability of the stream a lot of this wood looks like it's just randomly placed in the stream but in actuality, it routes the flow and, and sediment through the pools and riffles in such a way that it, it provides habitat and provides bank protection and keeps the, the stream banks from eroding and the bed from eroding. Something else we've done with this stream is constructed a floodplain. field uh, was real low and uh, the, uh, the little branch comes down through here, but just is kind of over next that hillside over there, and it would just flood and wash the banks out and everything. And when it rained real hard, I had water back in the fields, and it stayed there until it dried up. Now what we've done is actually excavated a floodplain for this stream, so when the flows do get up, you have flood flow goes out onto the the, the floodplain and reduces. The, the stress on the banks and the bed of the stream to reduce erosion. The stream before the restoration was over against the hillside, so during times of drought, uh, it was high above the groundwater. This was completely dried up during the summer, during this severe drought. There's about 10 pools up in the upper part, about middle ways of Mill Branch, that had enough groundwater to survive. Now with the new stream, we've actually excavated these pools into the groundwater below the water table, so that even in times of drought, the fish will have access to water and not be left high and dry. An integral part of designing this stream was putting in the culvert for fish passage. What you see behind me is the start of a new fish crossing and roadway crossing over Mill Branch. This large hole in the ground used to be two four-foot diameter pipes. And with time, those, the stream degraded to the point where the pipes were 18 inches above the stream, something that no fish in, in any of these headwaters could pass through. What we're replacing it with is a nine foot diameter concrete pipe. And that pipe is buried down below the stream depth. 
so that the pipe itself will always be wet and there's always an opportunity for fish to swim up through that pipe and into the, the stream reaches above here. The way the stream is right now, the day you want to put that culvert in might not be the way it's going to be here in, in the next five to ten years or even, or even less time than that. Streams will evolve and move over time. So the placement of this culvert, we considered how the stream might, might move so that even if it does move, that culvert is still going to function. It's still going to be able to pass fish, it's still going to pass the flow, and it, it, it's, it's still going to pass the gravel and the sediment load. If we're going to restore these streams and, re and be proactive in recovery of endangered species, we have to work within the realms of where the organisms are and within the strength of the private landowners because the majority of Kentucky is privately owned. I was optimistic about this because we've always had this flooding problem out here on this other end, and it, this will really take care of that, and that'll help everybody in the community, you know, as far as not just me, it'll help everybody. I thought maybe lose some of my pasture, uh, and they followed through with what they wanted, told me they was going to do and everything, and uh, but uh, they, they've done everything they said they was going to do. I mean, they do better than a landowner can. They can really fix it up. Mm -hmm.